Republican Senator Mike Lee said that wasteful government spending has created inflation that is costing his constituents in Utah, quote, a staggering $800 each month. He said that inflation remains historically high under President Biden, making life less affordable for American families. Lee introduced the Price Act in April. It's a bill that would require three-fifths majority in the Senate to approve new spending when inflation is above 3%. He also introduced a bill to ease backlog supply chains and address skyrocketing housing costs. According to the bipartisan Joint Economic Committee, of which Lee is a member, inflation will cost the average American household an extra $7,600 in the coming year. China has intensified its military activities near the Taiwan Strait. In response, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin has emphasized America's support for Taiwan. He said China's actions threaten to change the status quo. Austin spoke at Asia's premier defense forum in Singapore on Saturday. He noted China's increased provocative military actions near Taiwan, including almost daily military flights. The PRC's moves threaten to undermine security and stability and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific. China claims that self-ruled Taiwan is part of China and has vowed to take it by force if necessary. However, Secretary Austin reiterated the United States' support for Taiwan. And that includes assisting Taiwan in maintaining a sufficient self-defense capability. Austin's remarks came a day after his meeting with his Chinese counterpart. His comments have drawn criticism from the Chinese regime. Several Republican lawmakers are calling on the Biden administration to follow former President Trump's decision to withdraw from the World Health Organization. I spoke to Congressman Tom Tiffany on this, and he says his real concern is that the Biden administration seems to be reversing every action that the former president took. Congressman Tom Tiffany, thank you for joining us again. It's good to be here, Steve. Carson, you recently sent a letter to President Biden over your concerns that the Biden administration will be um, allowing the World Health Organization to, to continue on uh, going against the Trump administration's plans uh, to withdraw. Uh, can you tell us why you're concerned? Yeah, a, a few of us sent a letter. Um, and my big concern is that there's been no reforms to the World Health Organization. The Trump administration said, we need to get out if they're going to continue to be this corrupt organization. And we saw it. Um, uh, we saw it during COVID. I mean, think about the, the Taiwanese in December of 2019 warned the WHO, there's something bad going on in China at this point. Don't know exactly what, but you need to pay attention to it. And Tedros and the WHO did not act. There needs to be reform if we are going to continue to stay in the WHO, I'm concerned that the Biden administration is not going to demand that reform. Now, Congressman, I think when people hear the name, it's a pretty noble and distinguished name. Um, do you think that this is a matter, you mentioned Taiwan, of the uh, WHO being corrupted by China? There's no doubt. We see it in all parts of the world in all different ways where China is using its influence to um, and, and not in a um, freedom-loving manner um, where they're going after other countries and trying to advance their interests, oftentimes via force. And that's completely against what we democracy-loving countries want to use, like Taiwan and other countries around the world. And um, uh, China's influence they will use however they can, including being very pushy and by force. You know, you touched, you touched upon it there a little bit. Um, you know, it's not just the World Health Organization. We also see uh, China in terms of these global institutions that have been well respected for many years. The United Nations, uh, China sits on the Security Council, which gives them veto power. Uh, this is a country that is committing genocide against their own people. Uh, how does that, how is that acceptable? Yeah, it shouldn't be acceptable, and that's why we sent the letter. We want the Biden administration to hold the WHO accountable and make sure that the WHO is going back to China and saying, you need to be a good actor if other countries like the United States are going to continue to participate. And then you just have the whole thing with the IHR, the International Health Regulations, where we're really concerned that the Biden administration is going to turn control over to the WHO for... Um, 
um, health actions that affect the American people that should be done via a treaty. So there's a whole series of things that are going on there. And don't forget, on the WHO's Executive Council, you have Syria and Russia on there also. We really need to reassess what we're doing with the World Health Organization. So, Congressman, I have to ask you, does the Biden administration get the same intel that the Trump administration uh, was getting and, and, and got? Because it seems like we're loosening up on, on China in many areas. You know, I'm, I'm assuming they get the same intel. What really concerns me is it seems to me President Biden is determined to reverse every action that President Trump took. And that's no way to govern because we understand that there's going to be differences between the administrations, but on everything, I mean, whether it's immigration, energy policy, whatever, President Biden has said, I'm going to do completely different what President Trump did. And it's gotten America in a really bad spot, including with the WHO. Congressman Tom Tiffany, thank you. Always good to join you. Washington, D.C. is known for its world-class museums, and another very important one has just been added to the list. The Victims of Communism Museum opened up to the public. It's the first of its kind in the world. State-of-the-art interactive exhibits will describe the history of communism and its current global reach across Europe, Asia, and South America. This 9,400-square-foot museum is a culmination of decades of work. It's assembled by a team of the world's leading historians, architects, and artists. The museum is operated and managed by the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation.